All right, we're going to go ahead and get started here with uh, Middle Tennessee State. Um, welcome back to the 2024 CUSA kickoff presented by Silent Design. Uh, we're joined by head coach Derek Mason uh, and student athletes Nick, uh, Nick Vadiato, uh, Brendan Harris, and Devin Curtis. Uh, we'll start with an opening statement from coach uh, before we open to questions, and then we'll jump to Zoom uh, once we're done in the room. Coach? Excited to be in the room. Uh, obviously, it's good to be back in college football. It's a new era of Blue Raider uh, football at MTSU, and uh, I'm with a cast of players that I believe are fully representative of our program. Conference USA, uh, now as it's restructured itself, has done a terrific job. As you look at uh, what it did a year ago uh, in terms of uh, the implementation of midweek games, uh, what that did you know, for our conference profile, uh, it's outstanding. I think this, this conference has gotten better. Our teams, our coaches, our brand uh, is strong, and I'm excited to lead uh, this Blue Raider uh, group into the 2024 season. And with that, I'll turn it over. All right, questions in the room? All right, uh, in the front here. Coach Sam Dowden, GoBlueRaiders.com. Uh, Mark Owens told me that you guys have 59 newcomers on the roster this year, including walk-ons in that number. Right. Uh, when you're integrating that many new guys into a team, you know, what, what's the key to sort of building a culture between you know, the vets and, and that many new guys in the room? Thank you for the question. Uh, college football, the landscape of college football looks different. Um, there used to be a middle piece of uh, where we stood, where, I mean, you had middle pieces, but now in this day and age of NIL, transfer portal, uh, you look old and young, right? So the top part of your roster is old because it's veteran guys, men who have waited their opportunity. It's guys, uh, men who have come out of the portal, but it's also guys um, who, who, who are newcomers to your program. I think the great thing about, you know, where we sit, uh, man, we're a developmental program. And so we're going to have young guys in our program. And the idea of what we've been able to do uh, speaks volumes to uh, my coaching staff, the people around me. It's about making sure that you find who you are and creating chemistry. We understand that we're a blue-collar program. We work hard every day. Every day is a job interview. And so as these guys have come into our program, they've integrated. Uh, the leadership that you see up here has done a terrific job of making sure these guys move from day to day. Okay, limited questions, a lot of work, a lot of action. So. I'm excited about uh, this program, these newcomers, and again, I know everybody believes that uh, a lot of new guys, uh, with a lot of new guys, then there's going to be some, some, some discomfort, but really, there's been no discomfort. It's been fun, it's been functional, it's been progressive, and I think it's going to be advantageous for us because it's a tight group. In the middle here. Coach T.P. Hammock, with the AHS FHS, you were obviously the head coach of Vanderbilt for many years, uh, went around, you know, took a year off, and now you're back in the state of Tennessee. Talk about how it feels to be back in the state of Tennessee after being at Vanderbilt for so many years. It's exciting for me because I, I get a chance to work in an extended area, right? Um, Murfreesboro is its own place. Middle Tennessee uh, has its own fan base. And we get to go from the borough to the Ville, right? Uh, Nashville is a big market. And the thing about that market, it allows us to have a strong recruiting base and access to, to, to different regions within a three and a half hour radius, you know, of our space. Fortunately for me, I've been in this space. I understand what it is. I've traveled up and down those corridors. I know these high school coaches. And these high school coaches know me. So it's been uh, in a good transition. Uh, for our program. I think Dr. McPhee and Chris Massaro uh, did a good job of presenting me with an idea of what our resources were, okay? And, and, and I presented them with an idea of what we could do with those resources. So uh, it creates alignment. And I think anytime you have alignment, there's, there's, there's a chance for success. Um, this is not a rebuild, okay, at MTSU. I think we got a chance to compete like anybody else in this conference uh, immediately. It's just about you know, how fast we can get our guys up to speed with what this conference entails, because it's progressive uh, and it's a heavy, a heavy lift when you look at the schedule. Down here in the front. Hey, Coach, Kevin Barra from Sports Illustrated. Just looking from the outside and what you notice from the maybe competition of the conference and who stands out? When I look at the competition of this conference, the thing that's impressive uh, to me is the depth and breadth uh, of, of what this conference has brought in in terms of its head coaches. Uh, I've, known, I've known Tyson 
for a long time. When you look at Coach Shadwell, what, what he's done. I've known Sanch since he was a, a young coach. We came in it pretty much together years ago, right? And then Rich Rod had a chance to coach against Coach, coach Rodriguez when, when he was in the Pac-12 and I was in the Pac-12. So, you know, we've, we've all got history, right? And so I, I think, I believe that when you look at how this conference has fared and, you know, what you've seen from Liberty, what you've seen from New Mexico State, what you've been able to, you know, see from MTSU and its, its history, Jack State is on the scene. This conference is well represented. You know, that there's a pathway to the college football playoff. You know, we all know this and we understand it, but I think, you know, as I look at, at, at the strength of, you know, what these teams and coaches bring to the table in terms of talent, the NFL is peppered with guys from this conference. So that lets you know and understand that we play a high level of football and with the guys that you see sitting at the top and Jamie's probably sitting at the top having been, you know, the reigning conference champ. There, there's, there's something in this conference to be said about who we are, how we represent ourselves, and the football that we play. So um, those teams that I mentioned are at the top, but right now everybody's undefeated. So everybody's got a chance to go get some, so let's get it. Listener, right in the front. Nick, you've, two of the newcomers that you've gotten to work closely with are Amari Kelly and Gamerian Carter at the wide receiver position. You know, what, what can you say about those two guys and what they bring to what the offense can be this year? Yeah, I think it's been incredible um, to get to play with those guys and not just get to play with those guys on the field, but get to know them off the field as well um, when they came in in the spring. Two new receivers, two really talented guys, really smart kids who um, I think right away I just kind of understood like the – the production they were going to bring to this team. And I mean, they show it every day. They work their tails off, just like everyone else on this team does. And I think they've kind of brought a lot of maturity in the way they work and a lot of work ethic and showing the young guys how to do it. I mean, Coach talked about like how you have old guys and young guys and Amari and G coming in have been great, not just for the team as a whole, but they're really, I think they've done a great job of getting up to speed with being new and in, in the spring and throughout the summer of just really working hard and then also bringing guys along with them. And I think that's a credit to all the new guys in general, not just Amari, not just G. But when you look at the 59 new guys, I mean, it can be difficult at times when, like, not even on the field, but, like, in the locker room, like, you look to the left and your right, and it's a guy you might not even know or you just met that day. But I think, I mean, Coach Mason has created a great environment since the day he's got here, and it's just kind of helped help smooth this process along. We had a great spring. Summer's gone really well. And I think we're just going to continue to build each day. And that just starts with the work that we put in. Um, and it's a credit to all the new guys. It's a credit to all the guys that have been here. Um, and it's a credit to the coaching staff. And they've created a great environment. And coach likes to say, player led, coach fed. You know, coaches can only do so much. At some point, players got to take over, lead the team. And I think that we've done a really good job um, throughout the course of the summer of just getting to know each other, building chemistry, whether that's offense, defense, whether it's up front or it's on the outside with our wide receivers, um, it's been it's been a really good process so far. Turn again, Devin. Uh, new type of defense this year uh, under Coach Stewart, running a little bit more of an, a not fun a, a three four. What's it been like learning that defense and and getting involved in that as my middle linebacker? Uh, it's been really interesting with all of us um, having played a four three defense last year, switching to a three four. It's, it's all football. Defenses are all the same. It's just how you present it. So we get to learn uh, concepts, and then we slowly start teaching that to the newer guys who are newer to football. Since I've been around football for so long, uh, I've gotten to get a good grasp on like concepts and you know reasoning behind play calls. So I've been trying to teach some of the younger guys as well the reasoning behind some of the calls. Brandon, we were talking this morning about how you didn't have to come back and play this graduate year. You, you, you had job options set up, and you know you, you weren't even at middle this time last year. Why did you decide to come, you know, back with Coach Mason, who you started your career with, and, and continue to play this year with Middle Tennessee? Um, like you said, I started my career with Coach Mason, and I was a young guy, and he was able to pour and invest a lot into me. So coming into this 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 um, seventh se season with Coach Mason being new, trying to establish a culture, bringing in new faces. You know, I just felt like I could be a staple in the locker room to be that connection and draw the guys together, you know, show them how to do it, how the right way to do it, how coach wants you to do it, and just be a leader in that aspect and just use this, um, this last year to give back to him and give back to this program, so. Then here on the front. 
Uh, Coach, uh, looking at your schedule uh, that you've inherited, I guess, in non-conference, it's, yes. it's, it's a rather tough, I think. But, um, I mean, what, what do you look at that and uh, realistic expectations of how you may do in those games? You know, uh, <laughs> I was the head coach at Vanderbilt. So, I mean, I mean tough, is, tough is all relative, right? I think the idea, you know, for us is to play a competitive schedule man, that allows you to see what your football team is made of. You know, I, I tell these guys, every day's a job interview. So what we get a chance to do in these first six Saturdays is step on the field, present, you know, who we are, play good football, let the chips fall where they may. Uh, I, I feel good about... Uh, having a quarterback uh, man, who's put up numbers, who's probably, uh, you know, as, as heralded as any quarterback in this conference, you know, with the experience and the numbers that he's put up. He did it quietly. You know, like Nick Badiato has never said two words about, you know, anything to anybody. He could have left this program and decided to stay. And I think he's a testament to what this program is built on. It's blue collar. So we're going to work every day. We're going to show up. We're, we're going to be about the things that matter. Okay, and let the chips fall where they may. The season is going to be the season. The thing that we get a chance to do is the work, because the work is free. Right here in the front again. Chris Mikoski, ESPN Plus. Nicholas, uh, you being named to the Good Works team and the Werfel Trophy, just want to know what those recognitions mean to you, and what are some of those off-field passions that you hope get a little bit more light, given those honors? Yeah, I think... It's definitely an honor, and I'm more than grateful to be recognized in that way and to all the other nominees for those awards. Um, I think that's something that is a reflection of Coach Mason in itself. Since the day he got here, he's preached about being in the community and giving back to the people who support us, and I think that's super important. I mean, just last Saturday, we were fortunate enough to go to the farmer's market that Murfreesboro had, interact with all the people there, so support small businesses, and just get to talk to people. You know, what are they selling? How do they make it? Um, the process, like, that's how they make a living, and that's what they're passionate about. And I think Coach talks about, like, if you want people to come support you and come to your games, like, it's better to know who they are. You know, if they know you, then they're going to want to come support you, and that's, like, vice versa. We want to be able to support the people in our community as well. Um, Murfreesboro is a great town. And I think there's a lot of people who support the MTSU Blue Raiders. And I think the more connections we have with these people and the more genuine conversations you can have and get to know these people at a very, very good uh, personal level, um, it, it's just it's more beneficial for everyone. And I think, you know, when you're supporting each other and you see each other doing well, it's one of the you know most beautiful things about life. And so um, it's, it's just not me. It's a representation of our whole team. I think Coach Mason challenged every single player back before spring ball started to have 10 community service hours by the end of the summer. And I mean, I, I don't have all the numbers. I'm sure someone is keeping track. But I mean, I can tell you for a fact that every guy has exceeded those expectations, whether it's, you know, working at the Boys and Girls Club, helping out youth camps, going to the farmer's market and stuff like that. Um, it's been a, a, a really good thing to just give back to the community. And um, I think the community is like something we're grateful for as well. We'll uh, jump to Zoom for some questions. Uh, Noah Maddox, go ahead. Yes, Noah Maddox with the Shovel Times Gazette. Um, this is a question for Coach Mason and for Nicholas as well. If Nicholas, you want to chime in as well. Um, style of play this year, um, Coach Mason, your first season here. Um, if you could, and, and Nicholas a little bit too, in the off season or what you all have done in the spring and the summer, um, kind of go into you know what how it is going to look a lot different than, um, than Coach Stock, who was here for, for 16, 17 years. Um, let, let me begin by saying, uh, man, Coach Stock, uh, his imprint is still on our program. Um, something that I learned uh, when I stepped into the head coaching seat maybe some nine years ago was this idea that you don't change everything overnight. You look in your program, you see what are the strengths of your program, then you work to that. You recruit around that. You build your offense and defense around that. I've heard... Uh, People talk about 3-4 structure. We're a 4-3 defense. We just have some 3-4 principles, okay, within that 3-4 deep, within that 4-3 defense that allows us to morph and be exactly what we want to be. But again, it's playing to the strengths of our players. Offensively, we felt like we needed to make sure that we can protect our quarterback because you're only as good as, uh, you know, your, your front five and what you do on the defensive line. And so it started with protecting our quarterback and then utilizing tight ends because we felt like in pass pro at times, okay, our quarterback was under a little bit of duress. 
but you're still going to see 11 personnel, you're still going to see 10 personnel, but you're going to see 12 and 13 and maybe 22 personnel too. So you're going to see good old-time football, okay, with, with some good old-fashioned Blue Raider, uh, you know, principles wrapped in it. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, I think to piggyback off what Coach said, um, I, the first night I think Coach got hired, he had a meeting with us, the, the players, that same day, that same night. One of the first things he said was that Coach Stock had built the foundation that we're going to build on top of. And I think I really respect Coach Mason because, like he said, it's not about just starting over. Um, like there was a lot to the program that Coach Stock gave, and I think Coach Mason has done a great job and just being a, a great person that he is and a great football coach, and we're going to continue to build on that in, in, in his way and in his vision, and I think we've done a great job of that so far. And I think when it comes to the football, I think it is very important when you look at some of the best teams across the country in terms of, like, being multiple. And what wins you football games is being able to do what you want to do when you need to do it in any situation, whether it's in a, in a two-minute drive, at the end of the game when you need to milk the clock, in the, in the middle eight, the last four of the first half, first four of the second half. You know, those are situations that really determine a game. And, you know, you need to, you need to be able to make adjustments because, like we, Coach talked about earlier, there's very talented teams in our conference from top to bottom. It's not just Liberty and it's not just Jack State. I mean, top to bottom, there's very talented teams that have very talented players and very good coaches. And, you know, they're all not going to play us the same way, so we need to have answers for that. And I think when you could go from an 11 and a 12 personnel set and then get into a 13 and go under center in some situations, it offers challenges to the defense. And I think where we can be better and where we have been better this spring is just being more multiple in that. And I think we're going to continue to get better. And I'm sure it will surprise a lot of people come week one at the start of the season, you know, what that offense looks like. But, I mean, I'm very confident in it and I'm very excited about what we have going forward. Uh, well, hit one in the front row here before we go back to Zoom. Uh, Coach, Ken Caps and football writers kind of tie that all up. What's it like to uh, follow a legend? Mr. Caps, it's, I follow a lot of legends. You know, James Franklin, okay, in Nashville was a legend. Um, when Jim Harbaugh left, me and David Shaw took a Stanford program and went Fiesta Bowl, back-to-back -back Rose Bowl. So, you know, that, that's part of the process. You want to be able to, if you're a competitive person, you want to be able to follow good people. Coach Stock uh, man, is, is, is a friend, he's a, a valued mentor, a great coach. And for me, all you do, you, you, you look at what they've done and you, you, you try to pay homage as best you can. But here's what we know. The game from year to year changes and it looks different. So what we have to do in 24 looks different than what it looked in 23. So what we're going to do is uh, show up, we're going to make sure man, that we're prepared in all situations, offense, defense, and special teams. And, make sure that we, we try to dominate situational football because that's where games are won and lost. Go to Chip Walters on Zoom. Uh, Derek, uh, Chip Walters here, back in the borough. Um, when, you, when you put your organization together uh, once you got here in December, uh, because I guess the last time you were head coach, you, the whole transfer portal thing had not blown up like it is, but during that couple of year period, to prepare yourself to become a head coach again, uh, did you kind of mentally, uh, or even on paper, kind of put it out there how you wanted your organization built to take advantage of what was available in the portal as well as your high school recruiting? You know, Chip, an excellent question. I, nowadays, whether you're in it or not in it, you doodle. You, Every coach has a black book. Every coach has a blue book, right? And for me, I mean, it was really a coach's blueprint and bullpen of hires, um, structure, a program, okay, and really how, how I saw football, okay, especially working for ESPN and the SEC Network a year ago and the TV uh, portion of it it, it. it looked different. I saw things that I never got a chance to see before as a coach. I looked through a different lens. And so, you know, structure matters, okay, I man. I, how you resource your staff, how you resource your players, um, what do you want to build out first? You have to have a recruiting plan. You have to know um, what, what, what is your recruiting footprint. Okay, I mean, you have to start with a footprint. If you don't start with a footprint, well, then you're working from behind. And so, like, these things were, were clear to me on paper, but you still have to get the people hired. Uh, the, the, your, your organization is bigger than the head coach like in my opinion. Okay, the head coach runs it, like I get it, but it's about the day-to-day -day people because 
My philosophy is this, if I have to do my job and your job, why are you here? So, man, I keep people like in spaces, man, where they're extremely good at what they do. I'm not the smartest person in the room. I'm in a room full of smart people that know how to get their jobs done. So, hires were important, and um, these guys can tell you uh, from top to bottom, I don't care if we talk about nutrition, strength and conditioning, where we are recruiting, uh, what's happening with player development, what we're doing on and off the field. There's people in places, man, that, that, that give great feedback. We listen to our student athletes, and we have a plan for everything that we do. We'll close out with uh, Joe on Zoom. Hey, this is for Devin. Uh, Devin, good to see you guys up there. I want you to talk about Nick Vadiato overall as a leader on the team, what he brings, not just the offense, the defense, but just overall being a leader and what it's like to have a seasoned quarterback and a leader like that on your football team who's kind of been through the fire with you guys. Oh, he's everything he asked for as a leader. Uh, he's upbeat, always bringing great energy. He's a hard worker, most importantly, so he's always working hard. And uh, we go against each other all the time in practice, and it makes us better as a defense, not only as an offense are they getting better because he works hard, but we get better as a defense because he's always pushing us and we're always competing to be better. So, I mean, he's really the ideal quarterback leader, if you were to ask me. Oh, yeah, it's important. It was really fun coming in and being able to see Nick. Um, you can see the – the character he has and just the respect he has throughout the team through the work he's put in and just the way he carries himself. You know, Nick is a really good guy. He's a, he's a really good friend. Like His locker's right across from me. Um, so it's really good to just be able to come in and just talk to him um, about football, about life and everything. But he's also a great competitor. And like uh, DC said, he just makes us so much better. And it makes, makes me have to work a little bit harder and try to hide looks and makes me a better player going against Nick every day in practice. So, We'll get one last in from Chip and we'll wrap up. Okay, Derek, uh, it all kind of, the, there's kind of a joke around town that if more than four people gather for lunch, Derek Mason is going to show up. Uh, what has, uh, you know, you, you've been very uh, intentional on being out with the community. How has the community been intentional back with you? Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate the question. Um, I believe that if you love a place, a place will love you back. Uh, if you commit time and resources, like to, to me, time is like my greatest resource. So if I can be out in my community, if I can, if I can see people, if people get a chance to see who we are, I mean, I want them, I want them to feel some type of way after they've met me or my staff or anybody in our program, because I think it's the way you make people feel uh, that 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 creates a connection. And so we've just tried to connect, like in our community, and that's and that's been an organic process. It's, it's been blue collar. It's been farm to table. Uh, you'll see me at the farmer's market. Maybe you'll see me at, at, at the music night, uh, you know, on May. Um, it doesn't matter. I mean, if I see somebody in the grocery store and they say go blue, I say go blue. And most of the time, man, we stop and have a conversation about blue Raider football, and I think that's pretty cool. Uh, our fan base is passionate. Uh, I think our place can be like Boise. I think our place can be like App State. I think our place can be like JMU. Uh, you know, when you look at where we sit, right? Um, we we are from Shelbyville to Nashville. One in five homes has an MTSU grad in. That's a lot of folks. So, like to me, it's about getting out and creating connection within that community, so that community knows who you are. If they know who you are, okay, they'll come and watch you play. And what we've seen so far, it hasn't been just about ticket sales. It's just been about. I mean, I get emails every day about our student athletes. So. I think right now, I mean, we're in a good place because we're just trying to get to know uh, our community and our community know us. So thank you. All right, Coach, gentlemen, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. We'll be back with New Mexico State here in about five minutes. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. Thank you Coach. Thank you.